from what I see from footage, I haven't been to a ball in a while, and I'd love to go to see it. It's almost become a little bit of a circus in a way that pe it, I feel like what's missing is uh, the something special that we had years ago, which was because everybody was broke, because people were sleeping on the streets. Yes. We had balls out of desperation. Mm -hmm. We had balls out of love. And I feel like it's come, not, I'm not saying it negatively, but I feel like it's got a different meaning now. Would that be right, fair to say, Twiggy? Yeah, I think so for sure, especially when you think about how all communities evolve, right? And ballroom has evolved. There's the mainstream scene, which is like varsity, but now there's also the kiki scene, which was born about 12 years ago, kind of this sub um, out of the mainstream, developed for by young people. Um, and so you have like, I think both now are global global phenomenons, but I think that the Kiki scene is a, is still more connected to that struggle because the young people are still living in these situations, homelessness, um, newly diagnosed, so on and so forth. And so I think that the Kiki scene is a little bit more connected to that and that mainstream, as Jack has said, is global now in a way that um, I think about the Paris Awards Ball John Paul Gaultier was gesture on the panel and it's in this huge hall with TV screens and that wasn't my first ball. My first ball wasn't ex an experience like that. So so how do, how do we know the difference between the Kiki scene and the mainstream ballroom scene? How do so, you find it? Like, I want to go to a Kiki ball. Um, the Kiki scene has its own houses with their own leaders, its own kind of kind of structure that mimics and, and mocks in many ways the mainstream scene, but it's totally separate. And you find it the same way you find balls, social media. kids know? I know there's a lot of people who ask me that are on that path. Mm -hmm. They want to know how to get into a house. I was plucked. Mm -hmm. Um, the same way you were plucked, and, and you were plucked, and a lot of us were just plucked because yeah. we were lucky. And I, like you, Tyra, was brought in by love first. Mm. And it was like, you are fierce, you are amazing, we're going to groom you and push you out. And that's how I walked my first vote category, was my Caesar kicking me, literally going, bitch, you can take her, go. <laughs> and I was like, this is a femme queen category. He's like, bitch, your femme queen, go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what do you say to the kids out there that are like, well, I want to get involved in this culture. How do we find houses How do, in our local area? What do, what's a great way to get started? Um, I think social media, honestly, is the biggest way to connect to folks. Um, it is, it, it's what makes the community, like ballroom at large, accessible. So the same way you would find a clip on YouTube and look that person up and find them is literally it. That's the easiest way to connect to people. Um, Kiki houses, again, are separate, they're different, so you will have to know which Kiki house or, or a number of Kiki houses in order to know who connect, to connect to. But folks are really open to communicating, um, and folks are really open to, to continuing to spread the culture, so reach out to folks. Sounds like a lot of work. Well, and especially when you can't, like, when the person is just that talented, like looking across the room, or you see somebody and you're like, you know she's bona fide face, a lot of times, just like with you, they just saw you and they were like, oh, this bitch is gonna serve, mm -hmm. and you got plucked, like you said. So it's, that system still kind of happens within the frame as well. It does. Yeah. Tyra, go ahead, baby. Um, if I may just interject, I will say this. For the Kiki scene, um, what I discovered as someone that was in the main ballroom scene was that we kind of shut the doors and didn't realize that we were shutting them. And we turned around and saw that these kids now started to show us in the main ballroom scene what camaraderie, what, you know, struggle really was. These kids were 18, 19 years old and saying, we can vogue, we can do this. And they would hit the main ballroom scene and be rejected just out of sometimes just shade. And now they, then they formed this scene and I watched as Twiggy and kids like Genovia and the rest of them got together and built this amazing scene which also taught main ballroom that we had to adjust the, the path that we were on. That's why sometimes the person that you have an, you know, an issue with, whether you're arguing somebody, whatever it is, sometimes they become the teacher yeah. and you become the student and that's exactly what happened there. We only have like 10 minutes left so I think that we should go to some Q&A if anybody has questions. <coughs> You, right there. Yes, beauty. Um, as time goes on and the ballroom scene grows, what would you like um, to see in the growth of the ballroom scene? Um, <laughs> if, if at all. <laughs> For me, um, first coming out into the scene, like I said, it was a great, it was like Alice in Wonderland. It's probably one of the most organic places to get inspired from. This Wednesday, we did a big fashion show with Pat McGrath 
for her new makeup launch, and it was just epic with everybody that was in there, and for her to say we inspired her. For me, I want to see a platform where us ballroom and our talents and what we bring to the table rise to the occasion of RuPaul's Drag Race. What they've done for the drag culture, they have, you know, aunts, little old ladies in Kalamazoo, Texas watching Drag Race every Monday. You know, I would love to see a platform where we get to show the family side, we get to show the competition, we get to show the creative, and we, you know, knock it out the box. Maybe we'll get an Emmy too. Congratulations. Yeah. Not my Emmy. That's RuPaul, baby. <laughs>